What's going on you guys? Today I'm out on the lake again and I'm the first boat on the water again, which is pretty cool. First one out here of the marina. But the last time we were here, it's a pretty tough bite. I'm gonna see if there's a little change. I know a buddy that's been fishing it that says that there's a little bit of a reaction bite with like smaller spoons, blade baits and stuff like that. So we're gonna give it a shot. We're gonna see what we can do. And we're gonna change up our tactics a little bit. I still got that Ned rig tied on. I still got a jig tied on. Those are like my go-tos, my confidence, but we're gonna try some different things today. Oh, jeez. Birds just come out of nowhere. All right, guys, we're at this spot right here. We're gonna give it a couple casts, see what's going on. I'm gonna try this uh, Mega Bass blade bait here. There's one. That was a smoke well. Oh, she's barely hooked. Come on. Come here. There it is. Nice. All right, first one of the day on the blade bait. Not too bad. And it's a smallmouth. I think all the smallmouth are starting to get up in the column to start spawning here. All right, guys. First fish of the day. Nice smallmouth. Looks pretty good and pretty healthy. All right, first fish in the live well. Let's go. What was that, like the second cast, third cast of the day? Not too bad. I think my buddy was right. I think there is a reaction bite kind of kind of thing going on here. It's weird. Usually they're biting finessey kind of stuff. Guess not today. So what I'm doing right now, I'm just basically letting it hit bottom and letting it fall back down. I think that's what's just getting them to that's what's getting them to bite. Who knows? I only caught one fish so far. <laughs> so I could be completely wrong. And just super lucky. I forget what the I forget what the name of the bait is. But it's by Mega Bass. It's the blade bait. I have it in a half ounce. I think it's like an IU AU, however you call it, kind of color. Green top, kind of like a chromey kind of body, a little bit of, of a pink hue. But it's a Mega Bass bait, so expect to pay like $30. So guys, what's going on right now? There is a ton of wind. The other day, past few days, like crazy winds. Like my my city has never seen winds like that crazy in a long time. And uh, I think that cold wind brought in a real hard cold snap. And now it is really cold. Like four days ago, it was like almost warm. This is like right during, like after Christmas, it got super warm. Um, but right now it is pretty cold. It's like a cold snap. So maybe the fish are reacting differently but who knows one thing i like to do when i'm throwing spoons lipless cranks or uh like blade baits like this i love throwing really really heavy ones because even though it's super heavy you can still get a really tiny profile um just it, because it's pretty much almost all metal um and it sinks so they don't care too much about the weight you know and it's more about the vibration and how it looks so i love throwing a really really heavy blade bait or tailspin or stuff like that because i can cast it a country mile and i can still get a smaller profile okay one more cast and we'll move it on to another spot here all right let's move it along all right guys the key with blade baits like this is when you're pumping it like i'm like i'm kind of like jigging it off the ground like ice jigging it kind of in a way uh but when you do that i typically get bit right when it pulls up and stops or right when it's fluttering down so when it's fluttering down when they get bit you want to keep a close eye on your line and know where the ground is underwater because if you can kind of guesstimate the ground's going down you're pumping off the bottom i would assume every cast it goes a little bit lower a little bit lower but if all of a sudden it just doesn't hit the bottom and it just stops that might be a fish you want to check on that um because they'll bite it when it's falling down so that's the key with that but it's weird i guess uh 
they're not on a finesse bite today. I guess they're more on a blade bait kind of jigging kind of bite today. Wow, there's like really no one out here on this lake. Only one boat passed me. Gee. That looks like fish on the sonar. Kind of off this small little point thing right here. I can get my blade bait down there. It looks like, shoot, like 45 feet down. Let's try and work them from the sonar. Oh! What the heck just happened? What the heck just happened? <laughs> what? What did I just do? Braid is not forgiving. It is really not forgiving. Did I just go too low with my cast or something? Ugh, come on. Do I have to cut all this braid? Really? Describe to me the science of this. Comment down below the science. Is it science or do I just magically find a way to suck? Either or, I will accept anything. Where are the flip or my scissors? What, did I just decide to not pack my scissors? Wow, I really left my scissors. We're off to a flying start here. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be hell. Okay. <laughs> I'd rather have a knife than pliers right now. Also guys, quick tip. When you're handling braid and you're trying to tie knots super tight, try, uh, tie uh, connection knots really tight, or you're just trying to pull the drag out of the reel, be careful because braid has no stretch, braid is uh, super thin, and you can actually cut yourself pretty bad and or burn yourself pretty bad on braid just by the friction of it being so tight up against your skin and the pressure. So be careful in handling with this stuff with like a lot of... Uh, a lot of pull or a lot of uh, power because it could cut your hand. Okay, we're good. We're good. You just can't beat views like this. You can't. You really can't. This is why I come out here every weekend and spend thousands of dollars on fishing gear to cast these lures into the trees and snag them. It's for sites like this. I don't usually buy lures to catch fish. I usually buy them to either snag them, throw them in the trees, I don't know, do exactly what I just did with my rod like a second ago. All right, so one thing I'm learning right now when I'm, I'm a YouTuber, I do this for a living and we have a studio on my regular channel, Team Edge, my regular channel, we have a studio and record inside the studio, everything's set, all the audio is recorded on a different device, everything like that. But when I'm out here on the lake recording from my own personal channel, I am speaking at full volume right now. And one thing I noticed is that when you speak at full volume, everyone around you can hear you. It's weird. Like I would think, you know, a hundred feet away, they can't really hear what I'm saying. But in all honesty, all the way over there, they can hear what I'm saying. Like it's, there's no trees, nothing to stop the sound. So my voice just carries. So it's really weird when I catch a fish, there's a couple of fishermen next to me and all of a sudden I'm like, all right guys, check out this fish I just caught. And they're just like, what are you talking to me? <laughs> And also, I look like a psychopath because I'm the only one over here talking to myself. And they cannot see the GoPros. It's really hard to see, but that rock looks like it's screaming right now. I'm gonna call it Screamo Rock. Can you zoom on? Bobby, zoom in on that. See that? Oof. That was... No! No! Are you kidding me? I just broke off? Are you freaking kidding me? Ugh. Why? I didn't even pull that hard. That was a one fish mega bass bait. You're only allowed one fish. <laughs> That's fish right there. Oh, it's a good smallmouth. There we go. There we go, finally. Come on. Come on. Come here. Come here. Come here. Nice. There we go. All right, guys. We got a smallmouth. All the smallmouth are coming up right now. There we go. Good sized fish. 
Look at that. There we go. Cool. That one hit it pretty hard, actually. Oh, dang it. Freaking. A bass just followed my jig all the way up to the boat. Dang it. All right, guys, so I think I might start calling it a day. I'm gonna work this point a little bit more, but we caught two good-sized smallies today. I had a couple followers. It was a quick little morning session, so I think it's pretty successful for being this cold in these conditions right now. So I'm gonna pull out these fish and let's take a look at them. One thing I like to do when I catch fish, I like to bring them back to the spot that I caught them to let them go, just cause I don't want to take them to cross the lake and keep piling up a spot that I don't normally fish. All right, easy now, boys, easy, easy, easy. All right, we got this small mouth right here. This one caught her, what did I catch this one on? I think I caught this one on the blade bait. This is the Mega Bass blade bait. I can't remember what the name was, but it works good. All right, so I think these smallmouth are starting to come up a little bit more shallow to start spawning. So I think that's why we're catching only smallmouth nowadays. But man, I love the fight of smallmouth. They just fight so hard, they're so aggressive, and they just act so different from largemouth. So let's let this guy go here. All right, buddy boy, I'll see you. Oh, love that clear water. Got one more to go here. Okay, this one, I don't think this is the blade bait fish. I can't remember. They change color sometimes in the live well, but this one, I'm pretty sure I caught it on the Ned Rig. Trusty old Ned Rig, you can't go wrong with it. This is when the, uh, the bite is like super, super bad and you need something to finesse them and this is the way to go. For where we are in California, these smallmouth are actually pretty darn good size and pretty healthy size. So I know places like in, I think it's like Michigan or something like that, where they have like monster smallmouth. But man, this is a decent sized smallmouth for where we are. So let's let this guy go. All right, buddy. I know a lot of smallmouth hang out here. Are you just biting on my hand? Okay, there you go. There you go. See ya. Cool. Oh, I, my favorite fish to catch is smallmouth. They just put up such a different fight. They be, uh, they react so much differently. And they often, they just fight so much harder. Just, there's so many great things about smallmouth. And it's such a blessing to be on a lake that has tons of smallmouth like where we are right now. Um, I have a couple lakes where I'm at. And this lake, the lake that I'm on right now, I'm just falling in love with. This lake is just amazing. And I'm falling in love with it in the winter. So who knows what it's gonna be like when it's summer. Um, all right, guys, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna fish this point a little bit more, see what we can do, head back to the launch ramp, and we'll talk about what we did today. There's one. Yes. Stay down, stay down, stay down. Come on. Stay down. Stay down. Is this a striper? This is a striper. Oh, there's another striper behind it. Wow, a striper on the jig. What do you know? Okay. Come here. Well, you hit it hard. Another species for today. Ow, gosh, these guys' spines are sharp. Little guy. <laughs> Well guys, in this lake, stripers bite anything, and I just caught this little striper on the jig that I just made. Um, what I do with my jigs, I like to put a little bit of orange in them. It's a three eighths ounce jig with a one out hook, and this guy <laughs> hit the jig pretty darn hard. And he had a couple buddies that came up to the surface with him, but it's weird. Stripers over here just, they'll eat anything. It's odd. I have a couple buddies that fish this lake, and they say that every single lure that they throw for bass, they always get a striper on it. It's, it's crazy, but I mean, man, that's nuts. There's the jig right there. Kind of hard to see. There it is. But it's cool. We're getting all kinds of fish. All right, buddy boy, little striper. Thanks for the fun. Go tell your friends to come over here. Peace. Man, that guy darted away. <laughs> but cool, yeah, here, let me show you guys my jig that I made. But here's the jig. Um, it is, let me see if I can focus on it a little bit better. This is it, it's a 3 8 ounce football jig. I painted the top black, I painted the jig head black. 
I put a Dirty Jigs Alabama Craw skirt on it, and I put a double tail grub, the Yamamoto 4 inch double tail grub. It's a really compact finesse profile. I finesse cut it, and the hook comes with a one, well, the jig head comes with a one knot hook. So it's a tiny little hook, and I'm fishing it on a medium heavy uh, 10 pound test. It worked fine. Uh, I've been catching fish on jigs like this, and not a problem in the world. Um, just make sure your drag set right, and you should be fine. Hey guys, so sorry I didn't actually record the outro at the lake. I wanted to go to the tackle shop and buy the actual Mega Bass bait so I can show you exactly what it is because honestly, I couldn't even remember the name. Let's see here, my truck is a mess, but I'm gonna go over every single one here. This is the Dyna Response. This is the first one that I got that smallie with. These things are great. These things are, you're supposed to like pull up the rod, drop it, pull up the rod, drop it. And my, my favorite is half ounce. It's still a very, very small profile and it's super thin. So it's really fast and you can drop really, really fast as well. So this in a, it's like an Ayu, Set, Setsuki Ayu, whatever that is. It's like a gold top with a little bit of blue and purple in it. Something like that, there you go. Um, but that one's great. What I did, I didn't even like, I wasn't really super prepped to throw that bait. A buddy told me that, hey, that might work today, so I tried it. I literally just got a Dobbins Fury medium heavy, and I just got whatever reel was laying around, so I threw a Bantam on it, and sure enough, it worked just fine. I was fishing it with 20 pound, uh, 20 pound braid to an eight pound fluorocarbon leader. I used Sunline SX1 with Sunline FC Sniper. Works great for me, never had any problems. I've come to realize the reason why I broke off that blade bait was because since I didn't have my scissors, I couldn't cut the tag end of my connection knot very closely, so it caught the guides and broke off from that. So that's my fault. I should have brought scissors and cut it a little bit more flushly, but that's that. What else do we have here? Ah, my jig, my jig. All right, guys, so this jig right here is a jig that I made myself. Um, it is... I can tell you the components of it. You can actually make it yourself. So it is a owner, yeah, an owner football jig head. And what I did was I painted it, I powder coated it black, the head of it. It's already chipping all off if you can see that very well. It's already chipping all off and stuff. So if you can see, I'm kind of holding in an awkward position because it's tied onto the rod here. But yeah, the chip kind of paint, uh, the chip, the paint kind of chipped off a little bit, but it still is going to hold true. I put Dirty Jigs 60 strand skirt on it and I finesse cut it. So that means the first strand is cut pretty short and the inside strands are left pretty long. Um, and I put a Gary Yamamoto four inch double tail grub and green pumpkin and it worked great for me. Um, I usually throw the Alabama craw, so it works good. And that one, I threw it, what did I throw it with? Oh, I threw it with a Zodius medium heavy seven foot rod. It's a lot lighter than a lot of people like. They prefer heavies, a lot longer of a rod. I do have rods like that. I have a 784 Dobbins Extreme that would be better, but it's definitely way set for my Alabama rig. So I don't want to cut off the Alabama rig because it's one, crazy to tie back on. But two, I just like to have it set up for Alabama rig, just in case if I see a boil, a bunch of fish crashing the surface, cast it out there and burn it back, usually gets them pretty good. But that, that was that. So now the last one that I caught, ah, it was a Ned rig. It wasn't the last fish, but the one I haven't gone over yet is the Ned rig. It's this one right here. Um, I usually throw the C3 Baits uh, Warthog. That one's a great bait because you can customize in any color you want. C3 Baits down below in the description. But this one is a classic Z-Man. Um, having Green Pumpkin Gobi works great. Um, I pair that with a 1 6th ounce jig head. I feel like that's the perfect weight for a fish to pick it up and walk away with it and not notice anything, but heavy enough to where you can really have a lot of contact with it. Um, so the rod that I was throwing it on, this is like my workhorse rod right here. This is a Zodius medium light seven foot and I paired it with a Stratic CI4 and I put it with 12 pound SX1 braid with a six pound FC Sniper, Sunline FC Sniper fluorocarbon leader. Works straight for me, never had any problems with it. I have that, that's a rod that I will always, always have on my boat. I don't care what lake I'm doing, where, how I'm fishing, that's always on my boat. A Ned rig or like a small little finesse swim bait or something like that. But those are the things that I use today that help me catch those fish. So today the bite was a little bit slow, but we still got them decently. Um, the stripers are always at biting stuff that I, you know, just all over the place. But the smallies are coming up 
shallow now because they're getting ready to spawn. They usually spawn a little bit sooner or a little bit quicker than the largemouth. Um, so that's why all the smallies, that's why you're seeing me catch all these smallies. But I'm sure right when spring comes around, the largemouth are gonna come out of the woodworks and they're gonna be all up in the shallows and we're gonna be catching a lot more of those. So guys, thanks for watching. Click this video right here. This is a video that YouTube knows you're gonna like because it knows everything about you. Click this video right here. This is my latest upload. I think I got, I talked to the police. The police pulled me over. It was a weird situation. Click that video and subscribe right here and catch you next time.